see, I must say something also of the eloquence of the prophets, greatly cloaked as it is in a metaphorical style. The more, however, they seem obscure by the use of figurative expressions, the more pleasing they are when their meaning has been made clear. St. Augustine on Christian Doctrine the Founding Fathers of the United States of America used the ancient empires of Greece and Rome as models for their democratic experiment, and this should come as no surprise because the Americans found themselves in a similar situation to that of the ancient Greeks and Romans, a wealthy elite minority ruling over an impoverished servant majority. As a result, democracies are inherently divided into masters and servants, owners and owned, and initiated and uninitiated. Frederick Nietzsche noted in the genealogy of morals that the language used to describe these binary pairs distinguished one's class and suggested a typical character trait. The word the Greek aristocracy used to describe themselves was eslos, meaning one who has true reality. This is in contrast to the lying plebeian. In such a system, metaphor and irony work in conjunction to communicate information that assumes a dual audience consisting of one group that only understands the literal meaning and another group that understands the literal and symbolic meanings. Consider, too, that the word irony originates from the Greek iaroia, which means feigned ignorance. By use of figures of speech with more than one level of interpretation, a writer could incorporate ironic schemes into their works. The effect is, the slaves understand the literal message, whereas the literal and deeper meanings are known to the eslos, or those who know truth. The truth they know is the real image behind the metaphor. According to legend, the Greek philosopher Pythagoras taught on a stage from behind a curtain. On stage with him, behind the curtain, were his most adept students called the Mathematica. Those outside of the curtain, the exoteric, they can hear all of what is being discussed, but they lack any visual context, no gestures, no access to the visual teaching aids. Meanwhile, the esoteric or inner circle sees the ironic smile, a physical gesture indicating something unsaid, or maybe even a physical teaching aid. Jesus says to his disciples, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything is in parables. According to scholar Frank Kermode, parable could be translated as comparison, illustration, or analogy, but in the Greek Bible, it is the equivalent to the Hebrew mashal, which means riddle or dark saying. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, riddle means both a question or statement intentionally worded in a dark or puzzling manner, a coarse meshed sieve used for separating chaff from the corn, sand from the gravel, ashes from the cinders, etc. Furthermore, riddles from Africa are unlike European models in that they are often cryptic statements of a poetic or philosophical character which do not contain the question element and kings and holy men used riddles to test one's wisdom. Even by Jesus' admission that he speaks in parables, it should be clear that the language is figurative and meant to be obscure. In this case, literally a riddle, whose purpose is to separate those who know from those who do not know. By examining the figurative language used to describe Jesus, one could argue that there is a fixed meaning or secret code encrypted into the tropes of Christ.